Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Thursday. It's June 3rd. This will be our chart lesson for today, and this is going to wrap it up for the week. Man, this was a quick week. Seems like it just flew by, but um, anyway, no chart lessons on Friday, so we'll be back again on Monday, and I'm actually going to be taking a vacation coming up uh, again for a couple of days. It won't be till June the 7th, so it's not this coming Monday, but the following Monday, I believe. I don't even know. Oh, actually, it's this coming Monday. So, yeah, this this Monday, I will be out Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it looks like, unless something changes. We're kind of watching the weather. I'm taking another fishing trip, and uh, we're kind of watching the weather on the coast. So, uh, it's possible that, that it could change, but at this point, um, I may be out. Of, this may be the last chart lesson for... Uh, a week or so until I get back. I'll be back on a Wednesday, so we'll probably, maybe I'll do Thursday and Friday next week since I'm going to be out, but uh, we'll just have to see. Again, I may not go on this trip if the weather's going to be bad, but at this point I'm planning on going. So anyway, let's get to the chart lesson. I thought I'd show you the daily chart again just to show you what's going on here. You can see this continued trend up, but you can see we've been in this range, and this is what I really wanted to show you. This range continues to hold. And you can see we've so far we failed out the bottom and out the top. And notice we made a perfect measured move down on the bottom. And uh, so far we haven't been able to get back through that resistance. We pushed through there a few times, but we closed below it. I actually shifted this up a little bit. I think I had the close, the high close right along here before. But we got a, or actually that's not the close. The close is here. That we got a hot little bit higher body right there. So I moved it up to match that. And uh, I've noticed we're getting a lot of touches right along that level right there. So uh, that's why I moved it up. Just adjusted it slightly. So, But you can see that resistance has been very, very strong uh, at 42. That's uh, basically around 4207, I believe, is what that is. 4211 and a quarter, really, is what it looks like. So 4211 strong resistance there so anyway i just wanted to show you that let's flip back over to the uh intraday chart the 2000 tick chart okay here's our 2000 tick chart and really for the most part we had us we had this strong trend down early and then we just reversed and had a strong trend up really it looks like a range day it's a big range and we broke below the overnight lows just momentarily but the rest of the day was all inside and really from about 10 o'clock on that's just a weak a very weak sideways to slightly down range so really from 10 o'clock there's still a lot of good trades in there that's the thing the, the trading the problem was from about well this whole move didn't last but about 20 minutes but that's a really strong move up and really what prices were doing was filling that gap and you can see where we open this yellow line is where prices opened at 8 30 today and you can see the low yesterday was where i have this blue line right here and so this big move up was to fill that gap and then a lot of times they'll go on and try to test the close from the previous day and we they tried like crazy but they could never get it back up there so but they quickly and relatively easily filled that gap I mean, it was astonishing how you, know, you you see prices trading way down here at nine o'clock, and you know that the gap is to fill the gap. You've got 20 to 25 points to 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 make. You think, well, that's going to be a big day if we do that, and then within 15 minutes we've moved up and filled it. It's crazy, uh, but that's the kind of volatility we see lately, and kind of moves we see. So, uh, unfortunately, there wasn't a really good chance to get in that move. Uh, there's you, there's a possibility you might have entered down here, but it's really aggressive. So there's still plenty of trades today. Otherwise, several good morning trades. I mean, you, you should have if you tr start trading early, even at 8:30, you should have been probably done today before nine o'clock, uh, depending on whether you caught a runner or not, or you're trying to catch a runner, because there's several good trades in here. And so let's back out. We'll go through the trades and we'll wrap this week up. Zoom in.
feels like I'm backing out, but I'm zooming in is what I'm doing here. So uh, anyway, we'd been trending down and really all you had to go on at this point was the um, this channel. This is what I was playing. Notice you get the break, a couple legs down, it reverses. And then you're just playing this one back up. Uh, we really have not had much on. It's really hard to get a a bearing on this channel and I, I've probably got it a little too steep right there it's probably it's probably more like that right there and if you play it like that right there we do get a break a couple of breaks and closes but I also played the yellow one and that's why I ended up adjusting this just kind of to fit the yellow one is what I did and it still fits there so the only problem with that is we never get a overshoot. We never get a break. Uh, what I'm starting to lean towards is that I, the trend line is right. And the channel is maybe like this. And this is an overshoot right here. Because you can see it kind of playing off both sides of that line. And then that would lead to the possible reversal without having to have a break and a new low in place. So, and you can see it kind of fits better on this midline like that. So that's what I believe it was in the end. But originally I was playing it like so, because it does fit like that too. But you can see you don't really get the plays off the midline. And the midline is usually going to come into play. But if you move it back, to right along there like so. Notice how it plays off the midline, plays off the midline, pushes through, comes back and tests it, because that, that's what it usually does. Here it pushes through, comes back and tests it, and that's a good sign that that's probably correct right there. So uh, anyway, let's zoom back out a little bit here, or zoom back in a little bit. And uh, so anyway, you make this, you, it really you just play the yellow one, you get the break, two legs down, and then we get a re reversal pattern right here. Notice that new low, you get a first entry, and it kind of pushes through the EMA, pulls back. Uh, I usually like these better if they're on the upper side, but this closed on the upper side. So if it breaks higher there, we're probably going higher. And you would expect we're probably coming back to the trend line. We're way overdue. So I like going long right there, especially since the yellow one had played out. And of course, we run back up and we run into that other trend line. Notice how we're bouncing off of it and bouncing off of it. I like this one just because it's a notice you got a new high. You get a first entry and then you get a second entry and it can't go anywhere. It's just bouncing off that trend line. And then you make a lower high right here, which is probably going to act like another trap. I like going short there, too. Uh, there's another low here. But by this time you've moved a good bit away you're not even getting back to the ema i think you just got to wait for a second entry or something and if you just a few minutes later you get a nice second entry right here this was a great trade it broke higher and turned down i like going short on the uh, engulfing bar one tick below this bar right here but you need to be a pretty good trader to do that so most of you might have wanted to wait till here and if you wait till here the only problem is it's a huge signal bar 15 ticks Plus, you're right here at the lows again. There's still room to get out, so you still might take that trade. And then, of course, it bounces, and you get a failed second entry short. Notice the new low, first entry. You move on up, second entry, and it fails. Got a big signal bar. That's a pretty big bar having to go long right there. You've already got a break of this. Uh, so what I do is let it break higher and drop a limit order in a few ticks back enough to get you room to get out. It doesn't matter. You would have survived it anyway, but just something to think about. And then we just kind of chop on up here and you just don't really get a good entry in there anywhere. They're all first entries, not very good signal bars or anything. This one was tempting. And there's a clear two legs down with a hidden second entry, but being below the EMA and not being a perfect signal bar, I wouldn't, you know, I just think you're better off to wait. And there's actually a second entry long here, but that just looks like congestion. Now you might have gone short. I didn't mark this one. It's a second entry. You know, you've made how many multiple highs right there. The only problem is you're not quite to a new high. 
and so it could break lower and push you up again but that's a possibility if you want to be a little bit aggressive runs back down and the next thing you know we're just in this channel and then finally you get a fairly bullish bar right at the lows and uh, you got plenty of room to get out I think that's a couple of point move right there it doesn't look like it but it there he is um, and we still don't make it to a new high and we, we actually fail and if you just measure this range and you can see that's what the blue line is and I put the uh, yellow one on there too or orange or whatever it is just so you could see it a little easier and you can see that we drop down and bounce right off of that now, this was the one I was talking about a minute ago it's really congestive but if you understand that that's a measured move and there's still a little room back to the EMA and that we're probably going to at least come back and test this even if it's going to continue lower but it's probably going to fail and that's what they did they failed it out the bottom and then ran it and man it took off so that's another possibility right there. And uh, then this thing's off to the rockets, uh, off to the races, trying to fill that gap, basically, is what it's trying to do. Actually, it filled the gap at this blue line right here. Uh, of course, your measured move to the other side of the range is this blue line. And you can see we found a little resistance there before breaking higher. I mark this. Notice there's a new low. And you get a first entry and then a second entry. Um, and it is right off the midline of this trend coming up. It comes back and tests it. So you might take that trade. you got this trend line right here. This is a little flatter than what I have. It. And it, uh, so it, it's a confirmation of this Look, this thing spikes up and goes into a channel. That's a confirmation of this trend line. Uh, you are having to go long at the high, and your measured, uh, your gap is right there, so it could bump up there and fill that gap and turn down. So you got to be careful with that one. But you might want to take that one. It's just so far away from the EMA, and a lot of times you'll come back and test this breakout, but it it doesn't. I mean, it just rockets on off. I don't think you want to enter up here. It's just getting too way too far away from the MA. But then notice you make a high first entry, and you get a second entry right off the key entry point that fails. It breaks higher and fails and turns down. I like going short there. And you might you might look at this as a double top, and this being a first entry, second entry. And so there's really another chance here. It's a little close to the EMA for me. Uh, I still think it probably qualifies. Just make sure you got room to get out. And we come down, we get a little overshoot here. And then a first entry, second entry. Nice signal bar. Uh, this one actually breaks higher and fails and turns down. So that notice there's a new high, first entry, second entry. So that's a failed second entry long. I like going short right there. And of course, we're bouncing off the low side. And we come back. Moving up, first entry. There's actually a little break lower right there, but I like this one still um, because if you look, that's still all one move, so it really looks like a couple legs up. Uh, it's a, close enough to be a double top. It's off the key entry point. Um, you might wait for a lower high. If you did, you don't get anything here. But I still like this one right off the trend line because even though there is a little break by the count, this is the third entry, I think it looks like a second entry short right there. And that's what you're looking for is the two legs. And a lot of times if something looks like something and everything else lines up, which you got a sure downtrend right here, and we're playing right off that key entry point, then it's probably going to act like a second entry off the key entry point. And you can see it took it a minute, but it dropped on down pretty pretty strongly there. And then, of course, we bounce off the top, and this time we get a break. Um, there was a second entry right here, but you can't use this for a signal bar, so you got to wait on this one. And by the time it closes, it's just too much stem right there. So uh, it moves back up. And then you get a first entry long and you get a second entry long that fails instantly and turns down. And when it breaks below there, I like going short. I, I don't think I'd wait to wait down here because that's like 
Uh, well, it's only 15. It looks bigger than it is. That's still pretty big, uh, but I like going short right there. And and if you you know if you're newer, don't using you know don't enter on engulfing bars. Wait till they close so you know you know what you're getting yourself into. And of course that makes this a big bar, but that's still an easy scalp. And of course it makes a new low. Notice you got the break of this channel, two legs down to a new low, and then it looks like it's going to reverse. And you get two legs up and then you're just kind of chopping around and then first entry, second entry, it fails. And this looks almost like this pattern right here. Notice the high and you try to go higher once, twice. Notice the high, you try to go higher once, twice and it fails. Another, this was on an engulfing bar. This is it again. So it's probably going to act the same quick, easy move. And. Uh, off you go and that takes us into two o'clock and I just don't see anything else there is a second entry short right here but that's too congestive I mean hopefully you can see that you, I just don't think you want to be taking a short with all that congestion it would have worked you would have had to ride this out and uh, you know and it's right at close to two o'clock so there is another uh, tried, you, you don't actually break lower here but notice it goes up turns down goes up turns down so there's another second entry hidden second entry right there but being that close to two o'clock I don't think I'd take it either but that's what I saw so anyway that's it for this week that's it for today again I think you had a two-tiered channel working down with an overshoot that was still pretty weak at the time that eventually reversed and then you had a two-tiered two-tiered channel working up you got a break here and you never could even make a new high. Uh, and you, you really didn't even need this channel, to be honest. Uh, you can take it off and just use the short term stuff. That's what I really traded. So, I mean, the, the bigger channel didn't really help you at all. So, I mean, you could argue that, hey, maybe it's not even valid. I don't know, because it never really got confirmed. Let's put it back on there and just comes up. It, you know, it just never really. Maybe it's really more like that, and it had a big overshoot. And that actually does look, and I think I actually originally had it like that, and I moved it when it shot way up here. But that that's actually would explain why we never got a retest. And you can see it playing off that midline. Let me make it a little bigger. All the way down, so I, that's probably correct right there, and that's what happened. Uh, we we had that on the way down and on the way up. We got a big overshoot. It's like the market, whichever way it goes. I think it just has a lot to do with all the uncertainty. The fact that we're on the daily chart, we're in this, so prices want to go higher, but they're just bouncing around in this range, and so uh, I think that has a lot to do with. I think the market just doesn't have any direction right now. It's it's. There's still a lot of selling going on at that 4208, 4209 price level. Or what did we say it was early 4211, something like that. 4211 and a quarter. I mean, we got a lot of resistance right there. And I mean, we've tried to push through that one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days now, and now we're trading way down here. We're probably going to try it again. Eventually we may get through there, but don't trade into that price level right now because you'll probably burn yourself and be in big trouble if you do. But anyway, um, I'm going to wrap this one up. It'll probably, probably be Thursday before you see me again. Oh, and I did want to update everybody. My dog is doing great. He This morning he was almost seemed like his self, old self again so he just got a little healing up to do and then we got to wait for the uh, lab results on his tumors just to make sure they're nothing serious nothing malignant or anything the doctor doesn't think they are but until we have them tested we won't know but uh, he seems really good to have uh, that big incision on his backside and he's handling it pretty well and he seems pretty he ate really good this morning so and just really seemed his own self. So he was happy to be back home. He doesn't like going to the vet, which I don't blame him because every time we send him there, they poke and pride and stick him. So I wouldn't like going there either, I don't guess. 
but anyway, I appreciate all the emails and the notes, and he, he's doing great, and I'll keep you abreast of how things turn out for him, but uh, I appreciate all the notes and the prayers and the well wishes for him, so he's like part of my family, so anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.